Well, that was a fancy cutscene. Lolly ho, everyone, and welcome to our next project, Let's Play Eternal Ring. As you may notice, it is from Age Tech and From Software, uh, the people who are behind a uh, very popular series known as uh, Dark Souls. Oh god, I think the intro is going again. Uh, yes, it is. I can stop that. Oh, gameplay footage. We'll get into that later. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and hit new game. This game has a story and it has voice acting, so I'm gonna shut up. That night, Kane Morgan was lost in the dreams of his childhood. He saw the charred remains of his home. He saw himself standing alone amid the wreckage. His mother and father were nowhere to be found. Kane was very young at the time, so young that he didn't really understand that he lived in a country known as Solskia and that the neighboring country, Aldine, had suddenly become a cruel, aggressive invader. There was one other thing. They had all left for the island. That was all he was able to remember. Hungaria was the largest country in the Western continent. The elders, who at the time were the acting rulers, had abruptly dispatched a group of knights to a place known as the Island of No Return. The young king, a man called Ian, who was known for his fairness and moderate manner, inquired with the elders as to the meaning of such a dispatch, but the elders didn't bother to reply. Gillian Morgan, the loyal leader of the king's retinue, was concerned about Ian, so he decided he would learn for himself what the elders were up to. He had but one piece of evidence to guide him. It was a vague utterance made by one of the elders. Somewhere on the island of no return, was a ring imbued with eternal power. It was not a time for indecision. Gillian proposed to the king that his own son, Cain, should journey to this island. A few days later, before daybreak, a small boat departed from the port of Hengaria. It was a boat secretly obtained by Gillian for one purpose only, to carry his son, Cain, holding in his hand a sealed scroll from King Ian to the island of no return. Not gonna lie, that, that plot's a little bit confusing to keep up with, but it's a pretty well-written one. I like the narrator, too. Also really like this song. This game has some good music. Our protagonist, everyone. Thanks for the lift. Enjoy his face while you can see it. If you're gonna deliver that ladder, you'd be a lot better off doing it before nightfall. It's a letter, not a letter. You bet I will. We fishermen usually steer clear of this island. Uh, gotta be hard working for the king, huh? Best of luck to you. Hey, be careful out there. Welcome to the game. 
game. So, this is a first-person RPG. Uh, th the first thing you want to do if you're casually playing this game is to walk in here and find the interact button. There it is. And make a quick save. Because it's very easy to die, and you have to sit through all those cutscenes. Although uh, you can skip the fisherman ones, uh, you have to watch the walk through the cutscenes. Um, the eyeball, in case you're curious, is a compass. Uh, so that's north, uh, that's south, I do believe. Either that or it's backwards, but anyway. Um, the triangle is to attack. Uh, square we'll get to later because it's a bit. Square and circle we can't use right now. Uh, X is interact. You can use the D-pad, turn left and right, move forward and back. Uh, L1 and R1 can strafe. Uh, L2 and R2 move you, look you up and down. Or you can use the, the uh, control stick and move in any direction and look in any direction. For exploring, you can do this, but I prefer D-pad just because it allows me for better control. Especially during combat. Anyway, first thing you really should do is step back out. Because there are some monsters out here that are very keen to kill. Notice how our eyeball turned uh, red? It's because we're near enemies. The closer you are to an enemy, the deeper hue of red it usually is. There are some exceptions to that. Also, be very careful where you walk. Um, you might notice, right? Oh, wow, I'm trying to get water. You see how that that is open? Here? Yeah, we can just fall in the right? Like that. Yes, I did that intentionally. That is how easy it is to die in this game. Can't you tell it's made by From Software? <laughs> so, yes, we are going to have some fun. So, I'm not going to uh, do a whole lot of grinding on camera if I can help it, but I am going to kill everything I come across because I need to get some experience and loot some stuff while I still have a good weapon. Uh, you, that'll make sense later. So, when fighting these crabs, uh, the CDs and two things on their back, that's their actual back. Oh, one second. Oop, I accidentally backed out of the area. Uh, so they, they spin around at random, and they usually turn clockwise or counterclockwise, and then have a chance to shift the other way. Uh, so you want to kind of run off to one direction in the event one sees you. Uh, oh god, a gold zombie. Okay, the gold ones are, I believe, stronger. Dive in, attack, and I keep missing. I just aim better. Let's aim down. There we go, had to aim down lower. Okay. A lot of times you can stun lock enemies, but you have to be careful because I'm pretty sure they can stun lock enemies. It's been a little bit since I played this. So, aim down. I forget how you level up. Awesome. Also, be sure to look very carefully where enemies die. Uh, because items drop on the ground directly, and they can be kind of hard to see. Uh, I think only one of these crabs actually drops a little bit. Yeah, I think it's true. Jeez, isn't it? Always be careful when you have two enemies. Sometimes you have to just tap an extra key. No. Maybe it's not. Maybe the current maybe it's a random drop. It's probably a random drop. Anyway. Hey, level up again. Nice, nice, nice. Drop the Now, there is one other place you can go if you very carefully uh, look down and follow this area across here. This isn't important right this moment, but there's another cave over here, and if we follow it again, we can just about, right there, just about see something. It's it's uh, on the little spot right there. Can I make it out? A ring of magic. Yes, that's how mean this game is inside of the basement. Let's come in here for a second. Yeah, it's sealed 
and the hint is the color of the horn. White and black. That'll make sense much, much, much later. You're never required to come here, but just keep that in the back of your mind. Anyway, now we need to go back to the first cave. Now we can actually start moving forward. Also, it's nighttime now. Uh, if you pause it, you can see uh, on the top right there's a compass, uh, well, a compass clock. Uh, and it's just starting nightfall. Um, it's, you don't have to worry about what he said about uh, best to it before nightfall. I just don't remember. Really Enemies can creep up on you sometimes. I thought maybe that sound was a enemy. Anyway, now that we got the ring of magic, we could go save again, but I'm feeling confident. Uh, don't jump down there. Land in the water, you die. You take fall damage, you can die. You may not die. Alright, our first normal enemy that you're expected to run into is Sockets. I think they're Sockets. Anyway, they kind of walk back and forth and they do a leap attack. Uh, one, can you do it? You're gonna, you're gonna do it? No, you're just gonna do the swing. That's right, I think I have to hit him. Maybe this one does. Oh, here we go. Whenever, if they dodge back, back away because, or side step because they have a chance to do that. But they're a perfect time to counter. And we get. Yeah, we have the King's Scroll and we have Gas from Golden Fields, which covers a small amount of HP. So you can set items to uh, select as a uh, shortcut, which if you're playing on the PS4 like I am, it's the uh, touchpad. The left side of the touchpad is select, the right side of the touchpad is start. Anyway, uh, let's see here. That's more songs. Uh, ooh, he drops on. Uh, a watery gem. Uh, that will be important later, but we don't know what it's for right now. And I know what it's for. Gotcha. So this is how combat goes. It's about learning your opponent's attacks and knowing how to avoid them, as well as being aware of what's around you. Uh, area awareness is very important. Okay, that thing is what it is. Uh, as is the flower on the stage. The flower will mess with your songs you don't want to cross its uh, item. And that thing is not the rest of it, so we have no reason to mess with the flower or the dragon. Hopefully I won't need them too much, but I know they're going to be. Okay, looks like it's just more another Sogan, and there's actually a Dragonfly we can hit. Uh, their hitbox is really small though, so you have to aim well. And we get a Feather Gem. Huh. I wonder. Water and feather. Almost seems like elements. Wind and water. Oh yeah, and uh don't don't go across the building because you can't stop with everybody. Magic step. Not gonna lie, at least like that's up to this, I might be able to hear everything around me. <laughs> oh, if I had saved, I would test that or risk that. Anyway, no point in attacking that dragonfly, no point in going further this way, so back we go. Now, it's likely that I will have a map up in uh, later parts of the game, just because I'm 
how important it is to uh, have uh, no knowledge of where you're going. Also, it's a little bit of a Ah, the walking thing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, ignore the other settings there. Okay, that's much. The walk effect is neat and all, but for visual purposes, I'd, I'd rather not uh, mess with people's perceptions. I don't want to make anyone sick. Also, hey, a leaf gem. What would that would be? Yeah, so as long as we don't touch those, that flower will attack Now, if you do touch those, prepare to get spat out. That flower's a pain, so we'll just do it. Hello, son. A lot of enemies are very good so you have to look around when you first get to the clearing. Oh, wrong button. I was trying to hit. The problem with using the D-pad is L1 and R1 and L2 and R2, uh, it's hard to remember which button to hit what, and... Jips? No. Okay. The glowing gem? Hey, oh, wait, where'd you go? Get down here. Gotcha. Huh. That's interesting. Well, the gems are in uh, magic gem. Glowing gem, leaf gem, feather gem, and watery gem. Well, let's not go this way. Now sometimes you may need to drop down. In fact, if you look there, there's something on that cliff. You have to jump down from there, land there to get to it. So you have to be on the lookout for that. I think you take a little bit of damage, but it's not a lot. It's not deadly. So... Recording. This looks a lot better. I was a little bit worried when I was looking at the recording and watching the bobbing effect. <laughs> okay, here we are. So yeah, if we look down, there's something over there. Oh no, I didn't even take damage. It's magic sleep. You know what's up here? Okay, let's... turned around in this game, unfortunately. That's one of the reasons I need a map. <laughs> but we'll worry about that later. So that's what's to the right. Let's go to the left. So be careful. We'll go around this. And grab these green grasses. Uh, that leads out. Yeah, that leads out. Okay. That's the way you want to go. Uh, let's check out that little side room first. Ah, more uh, dragonflies. I don't know if these are all in range. I think some of them are so high up, you can't hit them. Well, that way. But I'll kill the ones I can. Oh, okay, you came down for me. Thank you. How about I kill both of you? Uh, no drops. There we go. Glowing gem. I'm not going to make any promises on how far we'll get in this first episode. Um, there's a couple of uh, minor cutscenes that we'll fix over into. I say minor, but you kind of have to get the door. What time of day is it? Uh, it's about to be daytime. Okay. Yeah, it's daytime. Good. Uh, I think it forced the daytime because it skipped like a good bit of time there. Anyway, let's uh, let's go around top. Here. Hi, buddy. 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 Oh, okay, he's in his walking animation. He's not gonna go anywhere. And so he's not gonna say anything until uh, until uh. Okay. Mr. Grumpy Pants. 
days ago. I was sleeping. Tucked in the night. Okay. What's this? Ah. So they've lost three people on this, this next mission. Okay. What's over here? Uh, it's a building. It's a mill, I believe. Uh, maybe it's a dining hall. The looks of it. Fruit. I can't have the fruit. Oh, hello. Can I talk to you? There we go. Oh, you're the new member. I am. You're hurt. Wait here just a second. I think I was actually supposed to talk to someone else before I talked to her, but okay. Okay, all done. I've heard about you from the assistant captain. You're from the mainland. I'm Marie Fowler. I'm the chief medic here. I'm pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Tell me right away if you get hurt. We have medicine available here. Nice. Let's go outside. I think that's actually where this just looks. And that's like a skate or something. I'm sure there's a little here. here it's, yeah, there it is. Okay. Not crazy. I just come all the way around and I'm sorry if I made anyone say. Anyway. Be prepared for that to happen a lot, by the way. Anyway. I need to. Thank you. But the door didn't want to agree with me. Oh, you're from the mainland. We've been expecting you. I'm Evans. Let me take that letter from you. Okay. I'm gonna drink a flavored water here. Hmm. It says here to add you as a member of our team. Oh boy. This means we'll need the captain's approval. But he's always asleep. What can we do? I guess we just can't send you back. It's direct orders from the king. There's nothing we can do. Okay, let me take your sword. I'll put it in safekeeping as part of the team's inventory. I already don't like you. Please get a replacement from Wallace at the warehouse. He's in charge of supplies. This is a weapon request for it. Please go to the warehouse and give it to Wallace. Just saying. I want my sword back. <sighs> oh well. So, you're the new guy from the mainland, right? Welcome to this miserable island. <laughs> so, you're the new guy. What are you really doing here? Yeah? The king wants you to retrieve the eternal power? <laughs> Hey, sorry. <laughs> I'm a nosy person. I won't tell the captain. Why don't you visit the shrine? There might be something of interest there. But that's only if you can open the water gate. Interesting. Anything else you got to tell me? Hey, how are you doing? No. All right, so in order to get him to give you a weapon, have to actually get the items these weapons. Um, just make sure you're able to talk to him and use the sins on him. Otherwise, hmm? he doesn't do anything. Give you a sword? Oh, 
All right, here, how about this? By the way, I know that some rare gems can be found on this island. They'd be worth a lot of money back on the mainland. Not many people live here anymore. Resources are excessively abundant. Hey, you, do you need anything? So yeah, he is our friendly neighborhood shopkeeper. Uh, as you see, the bartering process is with gems. Now, the weapon that he gave us is weaker than the weapon we started with, and I think this weapon is actually the weapon we started with, the uh, small sword there. There is another weapon, though. I think I can get to him if I come back to him later. Uh, I'll try that. At the moment, though... Oh, uh, by the way, we have to actually equip our weapon. I think he gave us one of that, or a knife. So... <clears throat> it's a very fast weapon. But it's not very strong. Enemies that we were two shotting before may take more hits than that. Um, anyway, we still have one other person to talk to. That's this guy. I know we have to talk to him. Let's check in. I don't think there's anything else. But it's going to show you this one first. Do a little bit of exploration. I, it's been a while since I've actually sat down and played the game. I don't remember if it's a hundred percent. Um, if there's anyone over here. There is. Who are you? He's got a glowing gem. And a nice little uh, decoration of the kingdom we serve, I think. Anything? Nothing on the barrels or boxes or no? Okay. So let's go this way. On the upside, the editing is going to be very simple on this, as far as, you know, I don't have that much to edit out. Because uh, the only thing I could even try to edit out would be load times, so please don't do that. <laughs> that emblem. I heard there was someone coming from the mainland. So that was you, huh? <laughs> I was expecting more than just a young boy for being the king's favorite. There's a shrine up ahead. Our objective is to go inside and investigate. But the deeper area is submerged in water, so there's no way to perform a real survey. If only we could find a way to open the water gate. Perhaps someone such as yourself will be able to figure it out. <coughs> Did you see that grave over there? There were more people here before, but now they're all buried. We've lost contact with the team that went to the other side. What's in that place, anyway? What do you want? I'd like to go in. Yeah, you have to actually uh, try to open the door, I believe. Yeah, here we go. If you've done everything you need to to access it, then he'll open it. Otherwise, he prevents you. We have no idea what it's like inside. Alright, um... Well, let's go find out what it's like inside, shall we? Alright, so welcome to the first dungeon area. You can't really count that cave as a dungeon, but this definitely is. Um, nice little save point right here in the, in the front of it. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to make a backup save. I expect me to be doing that throughout the game. Um, for recording purposes, you see. I love the music in this game, but sometimes it's a little distracting because the enemies are so quiet. Also, this weapon has such a short range, oh lord. Now you can instantly just buy back your sword, mainly. that's kind of what the game expects you to do, I think. But, we're just going to stick with this sword for a little bit. 
I wanted to have a little bit of versatility. With weaker weapons, I actually do have an advantage in stun locking enemies. So sometimes the weaker weapon is actually a good thing. Keep that in mind. Sometimes with the crabs, if you get out of their range before they can spin and find you, they go back to put them with sleep. Ah, oh, you dropped the magic stone. Nice. I think that's all that was up here. There's no magic rings to this thing. I'm gonna have to bring up a, a map of this place later. Just to make sure I've got everything. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Oh, yee yee. That was a jump scare on myself. <sighs> okay. Take two. Hello, Sagan. Okay, he's there. Oh, God, he's behind me. I tried, sure. Sometimes with a longer attack animation, you can actually just dive into them, and as they jump back, they still land on their knife. Um, knife attacks a little so quickly, uh, a little too quickly, to make that work consistently. Oh, okay, well, now that I've jump scared myself, I'm prepared for that to happen a lot too in this game, by the way. So what I mean about situational awareness being important. And while there aren't very many noises made by enemies most of the time, there are a few enemies that do make noise, and you have to be listening for them. Okay, nothing else here, just crap. Ooh, hello. There's actually no bells up here. Sagan. said that about the vines, right? So if you just run straight for that door, it wakes up the flower. If you don't want to fight the flower, you can go around it like this. You're safe. However, you can get close enough. You can just unlock it now. There you go. And it dropped a feather gem. So, yep. Yeah. 
Oh. A red door. Also, let me back up in case there's something to my right. Gotta remember to look before I try to check doors. Yeah, like, there would have been a good couple of crabs and Sog in there would come after me. One slight issue with this game is that uh, most enemies know that you're there, uh, even if you're nowhere near them, unless, like the crabs, they're designed to not completely see. Um... But the Sahagin was basically walking towards me the entire time I was here. But, on the flip side, the flower was obviously asleep unless you wake it up or attack it. Ah, oh, just nice. Just make sure there's nothing else in here. So let's activate the chest, open it up, and... Magic Stone. Magic Stones, if I'm not mistaken, refill your magic power, but we don't have any magic in it, so... Let's go in here. Oh, nice little safe spot. Um, now let's go ahead and make a safety save. I don't know how many of these safety saves I'm going to end up making, but it'll be okay. Red door. Oh, Saga. Watery gem. The flower. I stone and a glowing gem. Nice. Oh, by the way, in case it wasn't obvious, I'm tapping the button and then tapping it again uh, in order to pick up items. Because when you first pick up an item, and I'll, I'll stop next time, when you first pick up an item, it draws it up to your face and... Protected by ice. Huh. Well, I can't, we can't go that way without a way to melt the ice. <laughs> we can't break the ice. We're socially awkward. I... Anyway. Oh, this way's also blocked by ice. Wow. Our, our paths are quickly limiting themselves. So, let's go this way then. Like, aha! Jerk! <laughs> oh, this is one of the reasons I love this game. Oh, just wait, it's so much better. I almost need a screen counter. It's what, two times now? Uh, oh, hey, we're leaving the dungeon, kind of, sort of. We're really not, but it's okay. Oh, hey! Box! What's this? Fireball? Fireball? Yeah, so now we have a magic ring. Thus, we get the ring magic system. So, above our HP is a glowing bar. It's currently glowing. You may have noticed it fill up as soon as I equip the ring. Uh, you can switch between rings using the circle button, and if you switch between rings, you have to wait for it to charge to be able to cast it. Um, before you leave, make sure you hit this on the wall. Apparently, the thing they couldn't do was find a switch hit built into the wall. Built into the wall, and hit the button, so... There we go. Now, with the water level lower, you can go deeper. But, I think that is enough exploring for now. Let's see if we can make our way out of here. For one, we've got a cool new ring. How do we use it? 
square button. As soon as I find a monster, I will show it off. Let's go back the way we came. Let's go ahead and make another safety save. I'm actually just going to save over that this time. Just because it's the same save point based in the same area. Okay. Wait. Oh! Wait. These guys were dead already. Anyway, fire! Fire! So yeah, we now can throw fireballs. But I recommend not doing that for one major reason that we'll get into much later. Um, I do recommend to go through and get down to the fireball ring and then leave. Uh, personal recommendation, just what I prefer to do. One, it does get you a decent amount of the XP just doing that. Oh, hey. I missed. Oh, I, you know what? I forgot to show that thingy I was said I was gonna show off. I am an idiot. Oh wow, there's a lot of crap. I missed. If you're good at aiming, you can actually shoot from, from quite a distance. So yeah, if you just tap the button once, it brings it up to your face and tells you what it is, and you tap the button again to pick it up. Um, MP does not heal on its own, but it does heal every time you defeat it. So, it restores based on each enemy, I believe. It could just be the fact that you're killing them, but if I'm not mistaken, it's based on her enemy. That's another thing, is you can, because they're on separate attacks, you can actually combo uh, spells and weapon strikes. So, you get good at sliding between square and triangle, or triangle and square. These guys are still... Ah! I see a claw. Like that. No loot, though. I'm sad. Oh well, got some XP, so. Now, like I said, you don't have to make this entire trip back also. It's this way. Oh, an ice door. Uh, in case it wasn't obvious... Yeah. That's how we get past the ice doors. It's probably why the enemies respawn, so you can get mana in case you waste it all. Oh, red door's over here. Okay, that's all that's here? Okay. That's just too fun. And that's right. Alright, we made it back out. Oh, it's nighttime. Yep, yeah, it's almost daytime, but it's nighttime. There's a couple of changes at night. Uh, for one, this guard is. Uh, this Just is try not to get guard. in the way. Okay. Just try not to. That's why he's sleepy. Okay, that explains a lot. It's locked. Captain. He's still just gonna stay there quietly. Okay. I don't remember. Is the sky up? Nope. Yeah. 
these rooms are locked as well. So yeah, we uh, can't really do anything in the place at night. I was kinda hoping it'd be daytime, so oh, the time is still moving, okay. That's really interesting. Now, is it gonna advance just me leaving the area? I actually don't remember. Well, I guess I can uh, just call it here and advance the clock off screen until it's the time of the day I want it. So that's going to do it for now. And when we come back, we're going to finish exploring the uh, Water Shrine. I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah, Water Shrine. Um, as you can see, it's already the third day. Time of water. Um, I don't think the number of days matters more than just keeping a record of how long you've been. But, eh. And until then, we hope to see you again. Later.